السلام عليكم ورحمة الله بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله يقول الحق سبحانه وتعالى في كتاب الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والسابقون الأولون من المهاجرين والأنصار والذين اتبعوهم بإحسان رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه وعد لهم جنات تجري تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها أبدا ذلك الفوز عظيم ويقول حبيب مصطفى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم صحابات الكرام في حديث فيما معناه وددت لو أني رأيت إخواني قالوا أرسل بإخوانك يا رسول الله قال بل أنت وأصحابي إخواني قوم يأتون بعدكم يؤمنون بي ولم يروني ولم يسمعوني أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم Dear respected brothers, elders and sisters First ayah I recited Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was telling us about those who were able to please him Surprisingly this tiny little creature called human being Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the ability to please him And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Promised anyone who please him, like the companions of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah promised he's going to give him the same reward, which is heaven. And Allah described entering heaven as a great reward. After that, I mentioned the hadith Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he said to some of his companions, maybe a few weeks before he died, he said, I wish I had seen my brothers. They said, Oh Prophet of Allah, aren't we your brothers? He said, You are my companions. My brothers are those who are going to come later. They believe in me. They didn't hear me. They didn't see me. Or on Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Welcome, brothers and sisters of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Today we're going to talk about many subjects in one khutbah. First subject is love and hate in Islam. Second subject is when the truth comes, وَقُرْجَاءَ الْحَقِّ وَزَهَقَ الْبَاطِلِ إِنَّ الْبَاطِلِ كَانَ زَهُقَ When the truth comes, falsehood have to run away, have to escape. Why? Because this is the nature of falsehood. Cannot, is unable to stand in front of the truth. And how to do the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu also all those subjects in one uh, khutbah so we try to focus inshallah as much as we can we start by Bismillah Alhamdulillah Salaam Rasulullah Alhamdulillah Rabbah I have to tell you something I really love this religion very much and every day uh, my love to this religion to Islam increase and increase uh, the events that happened in the last two or three weeks uh, that uh, unjust treatment to our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam made me uh, love Islam more and more, and the reason is all those uh, events that happened, whatever uh, bad things were said about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Subhanallah, Allah subhanahu wa taala told us those things fourteen hundred years ago. They, you, they are saying the same things about Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and not exactly, but in general, that he is not a good man. This is what Allah told us in the Quran. We didn't uh, see something new. And what really hurt me is that a lot of Muslims acted like they were shocked. Wow, how come? But this happened 1400 years ago and continue happening. In the Quran, Allah is told, He told us about those who said about Muhammad وسلم, that he is majnoon, crazy. He is a magician. Uh, he is such and such and all those bad things I don't even like to say, but it is mentioned in the Quran. <coughs> and we find that a lot of Muslims, because they don't read the Quran, I don't know what or what, what is the reason. Totally shocked. How can you say this about Muhammad sallallahu alaihi And Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he acted in a different way. Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when he was talked about in a bad way, 
He didn't react the same bad reaction that we had. A lot of Muslims uh, don't even know that they say, said bad things about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself in the Quran. Who told us, who said so? Allah. Wow. For me, this means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, if I'm going to, say, to make a book and talk about myself, I will never say the opinions of those who don't like me. Impossible. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, they said on him that he had a, a, a girlfriend, sahiba, always all respect if they are respecting huh, a wife. They said he had children. They said that the angels are his daughters. They said all oh, those bad things about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Huh? At the same time, we Muslims don't read the Quran that much. I don't know. For Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was acting uh, in a perfect way. This is what we need to do. Reaction. First of all, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was never a man of reaction. Uh, and that's it. No. He used to lead. To lead is something and to wait until the action happens and then you do the reaction is something else. This is our problem. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, not only they said bad things about him, they tried to kill him. Literally, kill him literally. Many times, not once, not twice, not three times, many times. Even Umar ibn Khattab, uh, one of the most famous companions, Originally, he was trying to kill the Prophet And we all know the story of him, of him becoming a Muslim. The beginning of the story, if we all remember, he wanted to kill the Prophet And he, he heard the Quran, and he went to the Prophet to declare his Islam. But the Prophet didn't know that he became a Muslim. So, for the Prophet when he came, he's coming to kill the Prophet and the Prophet وسلم, didn't kill him in the moment. And he talked to him very roughly. Because Umar, he is the kind of a person that needs to be talked this way to stop him. And he holds him وسلم, from, his, uh, from his clothes and he told him, When are you going to become a Muslim, or Umar? Or son of Khattab, when are you going to become a Muslim? He's going to kill the Prophet. Another story. Umayr ibn Wahb, he is sitting beside the Kaaba. With who? With Safwar. Of course, at that time, the Kaaba didn't have a lot of people like now. However, uh, and Umayr is saying, this life became bad after all what we lost uh, in, in the expedition of Badr. <laughs> and uh, if it wasn't uh, uh, debts that I have, that I carry on my shoulders, that I need to pay, uh, and children that I need to take care of, I would have went to Medina and killed Muhammad Sallallahu Safwan is the best friend of Umayr, and he hate Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi also a lot. He told him, listen, your debts I am going to pay. Nobody is going to pay for you. Your children are going to be with my children. I am going to put them among my children. I will take care of them. Just go and kill Muhammad. I know you know the story, but just a reminder. And he went uh, to Al Madina with his sword. All night his sword was soaking in the poison. So that just a touch will kill. He knows he doesn't have to cut, just a touch. He entered the city of Medina. Who saw him? Omar. And Omar, he used to look and realize what is this. So he realized this guy, he wants to kill Muhammad. He took him from uh, the belt of his sword and he tied him. And he took him to the Prophet. What did the Prophet do? The Prophet, before Omar entered to the Prophet with Omar, Jibreel told him, this guy is coming to kill, to kill you, and this is what happened between him and Safwar ibn Wahab. Sorry, Safwar ibn Umayyad. However, the Prophet didn't run. 
he didn't escape. He didn't order Omar to kill him and get rid of him. He told him, leave him, Omar. Let him go. Let him go with such a sword, a poison sword. Let him go. He told him, come, come nearby me, Umayyad. This is, a, this is a great danger. Still, come beside me. And he talked to him. Tell me, why did you come? He said, I came for my son. He's a prisoner of war and, uh, in, in, uh, under your authority. He said, no, tell me the truth. However, it's a long story. At the end, the Prophet ﷺ told him, uh, didn't you sit with Safwan and tell him such? And he replied such. And he told him all the story. Umayyad, he said, nobody knew know about this except me and Safwan. None of us would have told you this. Only uh, a prophet can know this. And he recited the shahada in front of the Prophet ﷺ. Why am I saying this? Because the reactions of the Muslims, uh, I know a lot will, will disagree, but this reaction is wrong. It's my opinion. The reaction is wrong. Why? Why is it wrong? Why demonstration is wrong? Demonstration itself is not the wrong thing, but the destroying and the killing and the burning and, and, and you burn a flag. Okay, understandable. If this is the only flag, but China is producing millions every year. Hey, this, this flag is nothing. You burn, uh, or they burn an embassy. Who's going to pay for the embassy? For the rebuilding or renew of the embassy? Guess who? Who? Muslims. Muslims are going to pay for this. Nobody else is going to pay for this. You burn the bus, uh, who's going to get affected? Muslims. Less buses serving Muslims. And so on and so on. If this is going to be the solution, alhamdulillah, but it is not the solution. This is the problem. This is the problem of the Muslims. It is not the solution. Enemies of Islam, they are doing their job. Kafirs are doing their job. Friends of Muslims are doing their job. Even the shaitan is doing his job. Guess who is not doing his job? Muslims, thank you. Muslims, only Muslims are not, are not doing their job. You are blaming the enemy of Islam because they are doing their job? I mean, I don't find this too much intelligent. You are blaming the shaitan for doing his job? We should blame ourselves for not doing our job. This is our problem. We need to start doing our job. Here is the situation. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, and uh, a lot of those who love, who love Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they call him the medicine, or the cure, or the doctor of the hearts. Why? Because he dealt uh, with his enemies even before his friends. Uh, he is a cure, really, uh, to the hearts, to the broken hearts. To those who love the Prophet وسلم, they know what he did is something unbelievable. Muhammad وسلم, he knew his target. Like a doctor. Imagine a doctor who enters a hospital. Okay. And he got it's let's say it's a mental hospital. And he started curing the ill human, ill people, mental problems, they have mental problems. So if someone of those mentally ill people say a bad word to him, what is he going to say? Nothing. If he curse him, you will smile. This, this is reality. Doctors, this is what they do in the hospitals. Uh, if the patient curse them, if the patient, whatever the patient do, they don't care. Otherwise, in the mental hospital, he will be, keep running after all the doctors or after all the patients, which is not correct. If there is a doctor who does this, they will kick him out of the hospital directly. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he know his target. He came for a message and to deliver this message. So they come to kill him. What, is, what does he do? Kill them? No. He delivers a message. 
They try to beat him. No, he delivers the message. Whatever they do, when he found Muhammad sallallahu he found himself in a situation that it became like a war life. He is fighting with the Kafirs. He won sometimes, and they won some. They win sometimes, and that's it. But this is not what he wants. What did he do? <coughs> As a leader, he moved the situation from this stage to another stage. What is the other stage? Peace stage. Peace stage. In the peace stage, he knows how to do da'wah. So before he make a treaty peace with the Kafirs, Muslims were like 1800. All the Muslims at that time were 1800. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he moved. And he made it, it's a long story, but the summary, we don't have time. Uh, he made a treaty with them. The companions were shocked. This is an unjust treaty. So Hudaybiyah uh, was an unjust treaty. How come if someone become a Muslim and go to the city of Medina, the Muslims should return him back? And if some, someone become a Kafir and go to Mecca, Muslims doesn't have the right to bring him or to prevent him. This is just one and many, uh, many unjust, uh, 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 what call it, conditions for this treaty. But Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he knew his target. He had a vision. He is carrying a message, so he agreed. The companions became very sad. Omar, he was very angry. He agreed. After uh, this peace treaty, two years, within two years, Muslims became more than 10,000. And those 10,000 are the ones who opened Mecca. So Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he knows what he's doing. Nobody will distract him. But we are doing exactly uh, like the doctor who enters the hospital and mental hospital, the patients are cursing him and he is running after them. Every five, six months, someone do something. This guy is burning the Quran. We run and do demonstrations and waste for time, waste for money, waste for the youth energy, huh? waste for everything. Then this guy, he looked bad at Sahih Bukhari, we go after him. Then this, hey, when are we going to do our job? When are we going to to cure the patients. We have, we have a, it's an old joke that this doctor, he entered the mental hospital and he saw the patients. One is imitating like an airplane and the other one is imitating like uh, a car, racing car. This one imitating his route, uh, riding a horse. And he found one of them just sitting in the corner <coughs> doing nothing. So he went to him and said, why? Are you why aren't you do anything, doing anything? He said, those guys are crazy. They have mental problems. <laughs> I am not. He said, really? You know that? He said, yes. He said, OK. Come with me. Where to? Come to my office. I will give you a relief. You should go home. So the patient said, really true? He said, yes. He said, OK, right behind me. <laughs> so, this is what we are doing. Distracted. We are getting distracted by the people. Huh? They, but we are not focusing on the message. If we are really doing our job, we should go and deliver the message. This guy will say, hey, you are such and such. Thank you. Thank you. You are such and such. Thank you. Your prophet is such and such. Do you know him? No. Thank you. He doesn't know. And Allah said in the Quran, huh? don't curse those who whom are worshipped by the others, by the Kafirs. So that they don't curse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's it. Easy solution. Now, the situation that we are distracted all the time and we are not giving our message. And this is the problem. No message is delivered. So you will find in the Day of Judgment Muslims, he died, I am the shaheed of the flag. 
What flat? China made flat. It doesn't mean anything. Shaheed of the earth, what and this? How come? After Muslims being huh, for Allah, he died for Allah, he died to burn the flat. How come? What, what, what reason? If you die huh, to deliver the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's it. This is what is wanted. And we are in the stage of peace that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa wanted. How come we're not doing our job? How come we are so distracted to this extent? We need to start thinking, everyone in his position, how am I going to deliver the message of Prophet Muhammad That's why he died. That's what he died for. Muhammad died. He didn't die a regular. He was ill. And as the scholars say, that the reason of his illness was this poison lab that was given to him. Two years before the, before he died, and since that time he's not in good health. So Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he died so that the message reach us. But we are kidding, we are just distracted uh, by this and that, and not delivering the message of Muhammad Which means, I'm sorry to say, we are not doing. It. And you will find a lot of Muslims, hey, we need to go, and we need to, hey, are you going to do better than Muhammad Sallallahu uh, We want to, some Muslims say, so, we want to turn up Google. Okay, turn up Google. Why? Because they have inside it this movie that uh, talk bad about the Prophet Sallallahu Okay, you can turn up Google. Can you turn up the Quran? It is mentioned in the Quran, what they said bad about the Prophet Don't be scared of the words. We need to be scared from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are not delivering the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is our problem. We need to think, if Muhammad sallallahu was living right now, what would he have done? I'm not saying don't make the demonstrations. This is right. But don't destroy anything. Don't, if you are carrying the truth and you kill and destroy and burn. So what are those who are carry, carrying the falsehood? What are they going to do? This is what Allah told us. قُلْ جَاءَ الْحَقِّ وَقُلْ جَاءَ الْحَقِّ وَزَهَقَ الْبَاطِلِ إِنَّ الْبَاطِلِ كَانَ زَهُقًا Say, O oh Muhammad, say. Truth came. Falsehood must disappear, must run away, must escape. Why? How come? It's none of our business. Allah said this, this is the quality of the falsehood. This is the character of the falsehood. Cannot stand in front of the truth. Now the problem, are we bringing the truth? No. So the falsehood will stay. So we have to bring the truth. If we want this never to happen again, we have to bring the truth so that the falsehood escape. Inshallah. 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 What does this mean? We need to work in all the stages. Everyone in his stage. Allah always huh, asks from us to do what we can. He never Never ask us to, 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 to do what we can. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Huh? So what to do? I'm a student. I should be the ambassador of Islam. The ambassador appointed by, by Muhammad sallallahu inside the university. I'm an employee. I should be the, be the ambassador of Muhammad sallallahu and Islam inside my job. And so on and so on. Everyone in his place. Okay. We need those who have uh, legal legal uh, jobs, the lawyer, the, saying how come how, or how to reach the level that, uh, let me say it this way, the, the, the Jewish, they reach a level all over the world that if you say that the uh, Holocaust is, is not true, you will find a lot of countries 
This is illegal. But in the same countries, it is legal to curse Muhammad Sallallahu It is legal astaghfirullah, to, to, to say the bad things about Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala. How did we reach this level? Because we are not working, and they are working. We need to respect their intelligence. We need to reach this level of intelligence. Uh, by the way, those who died in the World War II, uh, what is said that the Holocaust was six million. You know how many died in the World War II? 55 million. But all the world knows about those six million, and they don't know about the, the, the rest, the 49 million, they don't know. Why? Because uh, if you have a right, a right will never, will never get lost uh, if there is men behind it asking for the rights. Inshallah, inshallah, all what Muhammad uh, uh, said,